a very, very neat theory. During the last ice age, vast ice sheets a mile thick covered the far northern expanses of Europe and North America. Along the edge of the ice, was a barren, windswept tundra where roamed a creature larger than many dinosaurs. Imagine our early ancestors when they came face to face with the great dome forehead and massive body of the woolly mammoth. It was certainly an imposing beast with shoulders 10 to 12 feet high and huge curving tusks 9 to 15 feet long. The woolly mammoth had a thick shaggy coat that stretched almost down to the ground. Individual body hairs were up to 3 feet long. The mammoth has been gone for 10,000 years, extinct at the end of the Ice Age. Or so scientists had long thought. Then, a Russian geologist named Sergei Vartanian came, including its only surviving relative, the elephant. Arizona desert. It probably has not changed much in appearance for 25,000 years. Long ago, a huge asteroid weighing millions of tons suddenly, unexplainably, fell from its orbit and tumbled headlong towards the Earth. probably exploded with a force far greater than any recorded nuclear explosion, leaving this crater. Founder of the American Meteorite Laboratory, Dr. H. H. Nininger. The greatest geological force that has ever operated in the crust of the Earth has been the force of impact. We have a little example of that impact here before us today. I say a little one because this one is about four-fifths of a mile across and 600 feet deep. But that is a baby by the side of others that have been found on the Earth that are old, that have been wiped out almost entirely by erosion. Originally, twice as high and deep, enormous craters have been uniquely preserved by the climate of Australia. Others were blasted out of solid granite one huge Canadian crater is even visible from space. Thousands of meteors have hit the United States itself. For the most part, their visible remains have long since been covered by the elements. The face of the moon is a clear example of impact. Seen from Earth, its craters appear as tiny pockmarks. They are actually up to hundreds of miles in diameter. It's hard to believe that our Earth's appearance was at one time very similar to the moon's today. What result did this awesome force have during our planet's ancient past? We don't find the North Pole in the past at the same location it is now by any means. It has been shifted as much as 30 or 40 degrees from time to time, and the only sensible explanation for that that I can think of is impact. Recent studies have established that our Earth's poles, as shown here, have undergone complete reversal in the past. Evidence of this sudden catastrophic shift lies hidden in the enigmatic vastness of the North Pole. Coral reefs have been discovered here, as well as trees with their fruit and leaves frozen intact. In 1900, explorers unearthed this mammoth with an unchewed mouthful of buttercups, its stomach full of summer grasses. The icy Siberian tundra conceals the fact that giant woolly mammoths once roamed a lush land 
until a disaster froze them in an instant. Could a meteor bombardment have brought about an end to their world? Pitted by its blistering entry into the atmosphere, a meteorite similar to contained enough iron to produce nearly 50,000 cars. It blasted this crater from the Arizona bedrock. Diamonds were created instantaneously. This computerized graphic illustrates the three million tons of crushed earth and meteor that in less than a second were strewn for miles over the surrounding countryside. One block, the size of a large house, was thrown into the crater lip. It is a mere speck in comparison to the immensity of the crater itself. A larger asteroid could have resulted in a crater the size of the state of Missouri. A meteorite, by the time it comes into view, will already be within uh, almost less than a hundred miles of its target. And a hundred miles for the travel of an asteroid or a meteorite would be covered in just a few seconds. So there is no such thing as getting ready for this thing. We'll never know in advance that one is coming. Most asteroids orbit between Jupiter and Mars. However, there are mavericks whose orbits actually cross that of our planet. Palomar Observatory in California has accelerated their research to track these potential threats. Eleanor Helene, senior scientist at California Institute of Technology, is the world's foremost asteroid tracker. She has discovered several hundred, including this one, the Ra Shalom. We could be caught unawares. Uh, it is our plan to be as prepared as we can, and I think the uh, increase in uh, general observation for survey and search will give us much more lead time to at least be aware that something is coming in close. Skylab fell from its orbit smashing into Australia. Our sophisticated technology was helpless. We could do nothing but wait and see where it would hit. Well, it's certainly uh, been our experience, unfortunately, that uh, if an object is found on a collisional course with the Earth, uh, and we've had a few exercises that uh, fortunately have not proved to be true, that uh, we really have no means of deflecting an object that is coming directly toward the Earth, at least at this time, as far as I'm aware. Because of this potential threat from space, NASA is studying the force of impact in order to know what to expect. The light gas gun, the only one of its kind on Earth, was built to study such an event. A pellet simulating a meteorite is carefully placed into the gun. A piston is locked into place. It will pump millions of pounds of high pressure hydrogen gas into the gun. A final check is carefully conducted. Because of the tremendous pressures generated, any mistake could prove fatal to the crew. The gun is raised to the vertical position. Upon firing, the pellet will hurtle down the tube at a speed nearing six miles per second. A target representing the Earth is prepared and the room is evacuated. The gun is fired. The target exhibits a striking resemblance to Meteor Crater. Planetologist Donald Galt has experimented for years with the light gas gun. Now we know that on Earth we have craters up to 100 miles in diameter. Uh, with three out of every four objects that strike the Earth landing in the ocean basins, why, we wonder what would happen if a big object struck in the ocean, say the Pacific Ocean, and produced a transient crater, is the water would collapse, a transient crater 100 miles in diameter. Uh, the ocean is only an average of two or three miles deep, so we'd just wipe the water right off the floor of the ocean for 100 miles, 
and it would collapse. And the tidal waves that re result from such a, an event are just, they just stagger the imagination. It's, 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 we just don't know what would happen, really, except it would be devastation on a terrible scale. If such an object landed on land, for example, suppose it's centered right in the middle of uh, Chicago, it would totally obliterate the city and the surrounding suburbs around Lake Michigan to the north and south of Chicago. And that's a little spooky because we don't know when some big object like this is coming in and could strike the Earth. In Search Of will continue in a moment here on the History Channel. Can't do it. They were the impossibilists. And then there were the possibilists that expanded human freedom. There is always the lure of the possible future. What humanity envisions can often be achieved. Coming up next, In Search Of continues with a look at the facts and fiction about no ones to the mysteries we will examine. According to the Bible, God said unto Noah, make thee an ark. Behold, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. No written word has survived as much skepticism as the story of Noah's ark. A century ago, scholars dismissed it as a quaint old legend. Then, evidence of its authenticity began to appear. In 1870, a young British clerk found an ancient account of Noah. Recently, divers in Florida found human bones submerged by an Ice Age global flood. And now, Climbers are risking their lives on treacherous Mount Ararat for the greatest archaeological prize of all, remains of Noah's Ark. A few feet of snow, a few days of rain can destroy a city. In Johnstown, Pennsylvania, after only two days of rain, the river rose 46 feet. 25 people were killed. When rivers burst their banks or tidal waves sweep onto land, the death toll can be staggering. Time and again in the 20th century, we've witnessed the awesome destructive power of a flood. The greatest legend of all is the flood. The story of Noah has been told in many fanciful ways. A recent recreation, The World That Perished, made by an organization called Films for Christ, tells the tale in a literal fashion. According to this recreation, Noah's Ark was 450 feet long. Such an enormous barge could contain enough animals to repopulate the Earth. The Bible says Noah took seven of every clean animal aboard. It rained for 40 days and nights, but the waters were on the Earth more than a year. Bible scholars have estimated that the deluge would have killed one billion humans and 35 trillion animals. They say that is exactly what God intended, to erase a wicked, violent world. So, searching for proof of Noah's flood is like trying to solve the greatest mystery story of all time. Clues are everywhere and have been found in the most unexpected places. Thank you. 
The modern search for Noah's Ark began in 1870 with George Smith, a British bank clerk. Tons of broken 4,000-year-old tablets had been dug up near the Persian Gulf and stored in the British Museum. Smith was translating the cuneiform writing when he noticed a line that sent chills up his spine. An old man named Utnapishtim took his family and all kinds of animals aboard the great boat and the flood. The next piece was missing. Smith struggled with the puzzle for nine years. When he published his findings, they created a sensation. The London Daily Telegraph raised enough money to send him back to Nineveh, where against all odds, he found the missing piece. The details were so exact, it seemed to confirm that Utnapishtim was just another name for Noah. It told of sending forth a dove, then a raven, to test for dry land, and the great boat landing on a mountain. The Bible says, and the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. For more than 2,000 years, mountain climbers have told of a huge ancient boat hidden in the glaciers of a mountain called Ararat near the Russian-Turkish border and now surrounded by top-secret missile sites. In the last 30 years, Several research teams have braved the storms and avalanches to hunt an elusive prize. Many people thought this picture caught a glimpse of Noah's Ark, but it turned out to be just a boulder. Some observers have seen the Ark in a tiny blip on this satellite photo, but an active imagination can see many things. In 1969, members of the Search Foundation climbed Ararat with modern equipment. Risking their lives in a crumbling crevasse at 14,000 feet, they managed to film an incredible find. Beams of hand-hewn wood were discovered. A piece of Noah's Ark would be the greatest archaeological find of all time and would discredit the theory of evolution. Hoping to date the wood to 5,000 years ago, the Search Foundation sent samples to Reiner Berger, professor of geophysics at UCLA and a world leader in radiocarbon dating. It consists of oak wood that is very dark looks like it has been exposed to lots of water or melt water and obviously it must have been brought onto Mount Ararat because it's way above the timber line where that piece was found. Uh, these reports of wood being 5,000 years old from Mount Ararat I think are erroneous. A number of my colleagues and I have separately dated uh, separate pieces of wood from there and found it to originate from around 8700 to 900 in other words the middle ages although some scientists challenge the validity of radiocarbon dating the presence of the ark on ararat has not been confirmed there is however overwhelming evidence for the flood in search of will continue in a recorded in these sediments, Morris reasons they must have been deposited by a single worldwide event, the flood. This took about a year. Canyons were then quickly carved in the soft sediments as the floodwaters receded. The present Colorado River just simply does not have enough energy in it. There's not enough energy in the uh, dynamics of the water to cut that canyon even in a trillion years. In other words, the only way that you could have that canyon would be for there to have been soft sediments, a tremendously greater quantities of water than now flow through, through the river. 
Uh, then it cut down rather rapidly, maybe starting with giant uh, opening, maybe sort of giant mud cracks or something in these uplifted flood sediments. So the, the whole Colorado plateau area and the canyons going through it really speak of catastrophism, not of uniform tyrannism. Other independent geologists have found evidence for the flood. Dr. Clifford Burdick has been to Mount Ararat four times. He failed to locate Noah's Ark, but his scientific mind recognized other clues. We did find many evidences. We were very surprised about the, what we did find that supported the, the uh, theory that there was an Ark, and because that the mountain was covered with water at one time. And this is one of the evidences. We found great bodies of salt at 6,000 feet, which uh, indicate that the water was much higher than 6,000 feet at one time. And also, at 13,000 feet, we found conglomerate rock, which is rounded and formed underwater. And also, all the way up and down, we found what is known as pillow lavas. That is, liquid lava is poured out uh, under the water, and uh, it freezes quickly in the form of pillow-shaped uh, affairs. So we have three principal evidences, I think, that there was a flood, although we didn't get to see the, the ship itself, unfortunately. Many of his fellow scientists would say that Burdick is off by a hundred million years. However, evidence for the global flood came from another field of research, folklore. On every continent are countless cultures, each with its unique collection of myths. At least 200 amazingly tell the same story of an ancient flood. Uh, we have a story like Noah from India, too. And it's about Manu, who caught a little fish, who told him about the flood. And so he went and built himself a boat, because of which he survived. And uh, when the water went down, he found himself on top of a mountain, which is still called Manu's Descent. And when the water receded, uh, it left the valleys that we still see in India today. From Kenya. Yeah, we have a story like the Noah's Flood. And this was actually caused by a woman who was a rainmaker, who was disappointed by some people in a party. And she decided to tell her friend to take away all her belongings, and she brought a big rain. From many American Indian tribes. In the beginning of time, there was a great fall of snow. Then a mouse came and gnawed at the leather skin and let out all the heat. Which caused a great flood that covered the fir trees and all the Rocky Mountains. There was an Indian man who came and saved all the animals and put them in his canoe. Even evolutionary scientists were puzzled by this consistency. They began searching for a source of water which could have flooded an entire planet. They found one in melting ice. When the last ice age melted, the oceans of the world rose 300 feet. Now, scientists suspect this may have happened very rapidly and could have been the basis for the stories of Noah's flood. Cesare Emiliani, professor of geology at the University of Miami, was investigating ancient tide marks and made a surprising discovery about the effect on North America of melting polar ice. At, at a certain point in time, when this ice cap had thinned out considerably, seemed to have collapsed and produced this flood down the Mississippi Valley and elsewhere. There were also floods in the West and so on. In fact, giant floods in the West. Research vessels sent Emiliani samples, collected from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. A heavy probe punches out long cylinders of mud. By measuring oxygen isotopes in this mud, Emiliani found that almost 12,000 years ago, fresh, cold meltwater suddenly flooded across North America into the Gulf. There is no question that the sea level rise in the Gulf of Mexico would in fact affect the rest of the ocean because the Gulf of Mexico is open to the rest of the ocean. So if we, there is a sea level rise in the Gulf of Mexico, it would affect the entire world ocean. We have been able to estimate that peak flooding down the Mississippi Valley might have reached occasionally an amount about 10, maybe even 20 times larger than 
peak flooding in historical time. So a very huge flood or a series of flooding for a relatively short period of time. Emiliani's theory was confirmed when Florida scuba divers found human skeletons and cave dwellings underwater. Warm mineral springs, a popular health spa, is a 250 foot deep sinkhole. When divers stumbled upon remains of a community now submerged, the experts dismissed it all as a laughable hoax. Sonny Cockrell, Florida State underwater archaeologist, proved the experts wrong. He created an elaborate videotape system to record every dive and eliminate any possibility of fraud. He confirmed the amazing fact that these caves were dwellings. Well, the fact that we have a human burial, an intentional human burial, a man buried with his favorite tool, the spear thrower, with uh, stalactites placed in to cover up the burial crevice, uh, indicates that that was at one time dry. Cockrell found an 11,000-year-old human skull preserved by the oxygen-free mineral water. His discovery offers new proof for Noah's flood. Is it possible this Indian was a victim of that flood or a witness to rising oceans at the end of the Ice Age? It, it depends upon whether or not uh, the sea level rise occurred uh, rapidly enough to be noticed by the people. There was a period from around uh, 11,000 years ago to 6,000 years ago when the sea level came up from about 100 meters to about 10 meters below present sea level. That was very, very rapid geologically. The question remains, was it rapid uh, in terms of human behavior? We'll need further research. I think it's an answerable question. Geologists now believe the collapse of the ice cap was in places devastating. When Glacial Lake Missoula broke through a huge ice dam, Parts of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana were scoured by a 1,000-foot-high wall of water in a single day. Was this Noah's flood? Scientists disagree. So we would say that the flood probably preceded the Ice Age, and that the melting of the ice cap that they're talking about, it might have produced a local flood, and no doubt did maybe around the sea coast of the world, but this was sometime after the biblical flood and probably was on the order of a few thousand years ago rather than 11,000. Now, there were times in which there was a lot more ocean water on land, that is, the capacity of the ocean basin was smaller. The last time that happened was about uh, 70 or so million years ago. And there were areas that had been flooded every now and then. For instance, Northern Europe was flooded about 30 million years ago. Italy didn't even exist until re relatively recently, came out from the ocean and so on. But uh, a major flood covering the whole Earth in a period of one year, absolutely not. It's been said, if Noah's Ark were found tomorrow, believers would say, we told you so, and skeptics would still doubt. In Search Of will continue in a moment here on the History Channel. CGM Realty Fund, now the number one ranked real estate fund for five-year performance. Managed by Ken Hebner, the fund offers the potential for high current income and long-term appreciation. Returning more than 77% over the past five years, CGM Realty Fund has outperformed the Lipper Real Estate Fund average for five-year performance. For a prospectus, call 1-800-FUND-CGM. CGM Realty Fund, America's number one real estate fund for five-year performance. Good evening, sir. Your finest table. Reservation. Perhaps you'll find it under Washington. George Washington. 
sir, that's only a dollar. Only a dollar. Don't you know that with 10, 10, 2, 20, all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents and just 7 cents a minute after that. Plus, there's no monthly fee. Great rates and no monthly fee? All day, every day. Oh, 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 oh. Walk this way. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. This is you. This is us. A new way to buy insurance. We let you buy insurance direct. You save money. Here's how. Simply pick up the phone and call this number for Coverna Direct. We can save you up to 50%. That's big. Coverna Direct is part of the fourth largest insurance group in the country, and we have a wide range of great policies to choose from. Call us toll free, and we'll help you figure out what you need. Say life insurance. How much will you pay? As little as $10 a month. Plus, we have a 60-day guarantee. If you're approved for the same coverage elsewhere for less, we'll refund your money. If you're looking for insurance, call Coverna Direct first for an instant quote to see how much you can save. Or do everything online at CovernaDirect.com. Call this toll-free number now and save. You'll love it. Coverna Direct. New Year 2000, centuries of celebration. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific on the History Channel. Now, history's lost and found. I've been to every corner of the globe in search of history's most amazing artifact. The original flag from Iwo Jima. Marie Antoinette's guillotine. The first Mad Magazine. It's a scavenger hunt through time at History's Lost and Found. Friday, January 7th, only on the History Channel. The collapse of the ice coincidence. The collapse of the ice cap, the flooding of the Florida Indian caves, and Plato's story of the sinking of Atlantis all have the same date, 11,600 years ago. Was this Noah's flood? The scientists are sharply divided, but they do agree on one fact. Through 200 generations of folklore and legend, mankind has retained the dreamlike memory of a prehistoric deluge. Coming up next.